is available to take your call. Please leave a message. Good day, old boy. Lord Drago Mount Vernon here, expressing my heartfelt admiration for the Chris Collector. Your videos revealing the splendid history and artistry of the Chris have utterly captivated me. I've collected various distinguished items over the years, but the Chris presents a new enchanting realm, albeit one that leaves me somewhat befuddled. Your YouTube channel has opened my eyes to the profound depth and significance of each piece, yet I find myself inundated with questions and eager to delve into Chris collecting. Might you be a sport and consider crafting an episode for beginners such as myself? Something elucidating initial steps, common pitfalls, and perhaps sharing tales of novice collectors? Your videos ignite a newfound passion within me, and I am thrilled to explore it further. I eagerly anticipate your next video, my good sir, and I extend my humblest gratitude for illuminating such a rich cultural treasure. Until next time, old chap. Toodle pip. <laughs>
Embarking on praise collecting is not merely an acquisition of items, but a commitment to ethical and legal adherence in preserving cultural heritage. I have made a mention of this many times before. Every country has its own laws when it comes to the importation and exportation of any articles defined as arms in their respective native constitutions. You, as a collector of antique, vintage or even new bladed edge arms are responsible for finding out the regulations as defined by your respective country of residence. For me, I am based in Singapore, so my central focus will be limited to that of legal requirements as defined by the constitution and customs regulations of the Republic of Singapore. With regards to the process of importation of arms into Singapore, as of the time of this recording, my previous video on the process of applying an import permit is still valid. Ensuring the legality of acquisition, respecting provenance, and adhering to ethical and legal guidelines safeguards not only your collection, but also the history it represents. Initiating your Chris collection involves strategic planning. From setting clear goals and budgeting to understanding the nuances of storage and display. Your collection is a personal reflection of your interests, whether they lie in their craftsmanship, historical periods, or specific types of Chris. The key essence of maintaining a collection is for your own individual and personal joy and fulfillment. Take no heed of other people's opinion about your collection. A collection's priority is for the sole enjoyment of its owner and current custodian. Oftentimes, new collectors get overwhelmed by unwelcomed opinions. Simply put, if someone gives you an opinion or comments you didn't ask for, just ignore it. Don't take it to heart. Believe me, most times those giving out opinions may not necessarily have the collection size or experience to match. If you are planning to get your first grace, I would highly suggest you match your expectations with your budget. The more quality the item, the pricier it gets. Now, I don't recommend at this early stage to be bought in by all the mystical and spiritual tales that may be attached to the item. Most of the times, these are just creative sales gimmicks conjured up by unscrupulous dealers hoping to snag a sale for an exorbitant profit, especially out of gullible new beginners. Navigating through the acquisition of the Chris involves discernment and a keen eye, ensuring each piece's authenticity and quality. From identifying reputable resources to mastering the art of negotiation, each acquisition is a tale of its own, adding to the tapestry of your collection. For beginners, it would be too high of an expectation uh, to land the perfect score for each acquisition, but this is the fun part of becoming a collector. Each acquisition is a unique experience and an adventure on its own. The more you collect, the more experience you gain, and in the long run, this will add value to yourself and others eventually when they seek your advice. The cycle and continuity of collecting will always be paid forward through each subsequent generation. Each generation will inevitably retain some knowledge from the experience of previous collectors. With that said, I would additionally advise on making your acquisition from credible sources like licensed and established dealers or notable auction houses. If you plan to deal with individual runners instead, do transact with cautious discretion. If there is any doubt, it is better to hesitate on the side of safety. There is no denying that some irresponsible sellers peddle items from theft. So do be mindful and remain dubious of any deals that may sound too good to be true. Exploring the realms of praise collecting is a perpetual journey of learning, discovery, and appreciation of the rich cultural tapestry it represents. If you have learned something new from today's video, do have a care and remember to subscribe, like, and share if you would. Your support will help this video reach out to other praise enthusiasts out there 
and will allow them to discover and explore deeper into this facet of brace collecting in upcoming episodes. Do share your thoughts and questions in the comments below and let's weave the future of brace collecting together. If you need a refresher on the process and procedure of applying for an import permit for a craze into Singapore, check out that video right here. Until my next video, keep learning, keep exploring, and treasure the stories that unfold with each piece added into your collection. I'll see you in the next part of this video series. Happy collecting! God!